Minimum of two observations or site visits are required for all professional staff. So this is for, counts for teachers, and you also have two observations or site visits as school leaders from your supervisors. One of the observations or site visits must be announced, and it includes a pre and a post conference, so at least one of them. Additional observation activities, for example, full observations, multiple focus observations, um, can be used to gather evidence that collectively represent a minimum of one additional observation. I know every district has policies when it comes to this, and I know that they're there and you have to follow those, but I wanna give y'all a little bit of food for thought. We have so much data now, if you're using LEAP 360 in your school, that we are now getting better at progress monitoring our kids along the way. So if we're getting better at watching our kids along the way, we need to get better at progress monitoring our teaching through observations along the way. So in my mind, having the two formal observations per year is really no longer sufficient to give teachers good feedback. I would rather see school leaders going in and doing multiple short, informal, and frequent observations so that I can give teachers short feedback along the way and help them improve. In the utopia in my brain, this would, it would look like this. The timeline that we laid out, in the beginning of the year, I would go in in the first semester for 15 minute walkthroughs several times, maybe four or five times, preparing them for a formal observation in the spring. That gives you a little bit more freedom as the school leader to hit more people on a more frequent basis, but it more importantly gives teacher feedback that can help them make quick improvements before you come back in. And then they're all prepared for the final, final uh, formal observation with a pre-post in the spring. So what the bulletin says is that you have the autonomy to do that, but districts make the decision to follow the formal one in the spring, one in the fall. But I want you to just think that even though we have to fall into the, what our districts tell us we need to do, which is a spring and a fall, a spring and a fall and a spring, that in my school, what's in my circle of control is that we can still make it a priority for us to go in and do several walkthroughs as often as we can. And all that is is more, in, more information to support the formal observations that you have to do. There, with Compass, I feel like our brains all have to shift from the letter of the law, which is following Bulletin 130, to the spirit of the law, which is how are we going to give teachers good feedback about their instruction to make them better teachers, and that's what Bianca's referring to, the way that you, you have a system set up to do these informal, frequent informal feedback sessions with your teachers to help them improve teaching, which helps improve learning. So let me give you a quick example. You know how we said we were struggling in ELA, but we were holding our own in math? So for all of our ELA teachers in our PLCs, we're looking at the data and we're doing these uh, informal walkthroughs and we're seeing that the level of questioning from our teachers to students during instruction are not very rigorous, meaning they could be using higher order questions that would have the students engage in more discussion, think, um, think more about the content that they're talking about and have more interaction. So then we, as the leadership team, say, you know what, then we're going to blitz over the next four weeks all, all of our classes to look for that specific thing. So then we might go in with the rubric and we might say, let's look at what the rubric considers to be proficient, a number three, and what is considered to be highly effective, a four, when it comes to uh, questioning and discussion techniques in class from that third domain of instruction. And then we all have to come to consensus about what that should look like. Because one of the things that I think you all know exists, because I know exists from when I was in the classroom, is I had a sigh of relief or I had anxiety when I found out which administrator was gonna be evaluating me for that school year. <laughs> because I knew if I was gonna have some, some leeway or if it was gonna be really, really tight. So that's why it's important for the leaders in the school to calibrate what their expectations are, right? And that comes from going in and doing these informal walkthroughs together 
and then debriefing about what you saw.